Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be playing around with Homepage. Um, homepage is essentially similar to like, you know, you kind of hit your like kind of like dashboard in regards to just like, uh, you know, it's simple. Uh, like when you open Chrome, it kind of gives you kind of like a homepage where you got like your recently used tabs and stuff like that. Um, but this one you can customize to be whatever you want. You can add bookmarks to it, you can add links. Um, and one of the best parts about this is they have widget integrations, which essentially you can get certain stats um, based off of the integrations that they do support. Um, so you can see certain like uh, stats that you can gather from an API, so for example, like Pi-hole, which we'll be showing you in this video, um, so that you can just see in general, like, hey, you know, how's this application performing? How how are things going? Um, without needing to actually log in because it'll be either using an API key or something else, um, depending on the widget configuration. So, um, but that's what we'll be doing today. So, uh, sit back, relax, and let's get started. All right, so first thing that we'll want to do is get a virtual machine set up so that we can essentially install uh, the Docker container and get everything set up for it. So with that, what we'll do is log into our Git GitLab um, because I haven't logged in for, for a while. Log in with the correct password and go to our DNS repository. So from here, we all set up DNS so that we can resolve it with a DNS name and not just an IP, um, which is an amazing thing, guys. If you still use IPs instead of a DNS to get to your home lab stuff, that kind of is rough. Um, so you should go check out my DNS video if you are looking on how to set up a DNS server. Um, but in this case, we will set it up on the next entry. So 111, and we will commit that. So add homepage. So this will go through our GitLab pipeline and deploy out to our DNS server, which will allow it to essentially update our zone in it, which is really cool and, and neat. If you're looking for that specific uh, playbook, you can find it in my home lab series. Um, I, I do a lot of a few random home lab series for specific playbooks. So feel free to go check those out in my very list of videos. The next thing we'll do here is update our Ansible Playbooks repository and essentially say, hey, we need another host and it will be called Homepage. This will essentially allow Ansible to hit, uh, essentially count towards a host in, in its inventory that it can hit when trying to run some Ansible Playbooks. Um, and how we run those playbooks is essentially with AWX, we will be able to create um, our virtual machine using our uh, templates, which I create into a workflow. So I got multiple templates into a workflow, which we can launch this template and essentially it will create the new VM, patch it, install Docker and Docker Compose, which will be a key component for this because um, we'll be using the Docker Compose from the homepage, uh, GitHub and creates uh, certs with step CA and then set up engine X with those certs so we can use HTTPS. So that will be pretty much what we do. So, and from there, we'll just answer a few prompts. So what's our house name? So we'll say homepage. Uh, the DNS was what we set it to. Um, the VM name is just what it was shown in vCenter and I just like to separate it out for future reference. And then the proxy address. So get homepage, GitHub. Let's look this up real quick. And I believe we would, there, the Docker Compose is actually in their installation on their page. Install Docker. And we can see that home page will run on 3000. So we'll, we'll proxy it through on 3000 here. Localhost 3000. And hit launch. So from there, it'll just do its simple steps, create it, patch it, install Docker, Docker Compose, create the sets, and set up Nginx. Um, this takes a few minutes, so we'll let this install, and once this is finished installed, we'll continue with the rest of the configuration. All right, now that the installation has finished, what we can do is SSH to our server, so homepage.dragon.local. We'll set the fingerprint and I'll log in. 
So from here, we can see that Docker is installed. Um, so we'll go back to the installation that they have here. We'll copy um, their Docker Compose file. Just double checking this is the right Docker Compose. In case there's something else. Docker Compose .yaml, And we will paste that. Um, so this is pretty simple um, Docker Compose. There really isn't too much to this. Uh, we don't need to set the environment stuff. Um, I think that should just be fine without setting it. Um, container name, uh, the ports, the volumes. Um, oh, so for the volumes, we'll actually add an extra line here um, because we want to also um, set up our images, um, you know, having images always is a good thing. So what we'll do is uh, icons, icons, and we'll map this to app public icons. And this is part of their documentation, actually. Um, and we'll do dot config. Um, and I think that should be set. Um, so we will save that and then we should be able to do docker compose up hyphen D for detach mode. This should now pull down the container and start running it in the background once it has fully completed. Um, it's a pretty small image so there really isn't too much to it. So we can see docker PSA, we can see that it is running docker compose logs follow. Um, and we can see that it is now listening on port 3000. Um, but because we got the proxy thing, we should be able to just do um, home page dot dragon dot local. And it will bring you essentially the default configuration for the home page. Um, there really isn't much to it in w when you kind of start looking at it. Um, most of the things will be on the back end if you want to change something. So let's say, for example, um, you want, you know, you, you don't want all these groups or, or, or something of that sort. What we can do is in here, we'll go to the config directory and we can edit the services.yaml. So you can see how it says my first group and then the services underneath. This is all in YAML, so it's pretty it's pretty self-explanatory if you've ever used YAML before, but it's all like stands initiated. So my first group, my first service, right? So say for example, you wanted your first group to be like home lab. And you wanted like your first thing to be like GitLab, right? Um, then you can change the ref in here. Instead of HTTP localhost, you change it to the URL of GitLab. So we just do this and we would replace this with that. Um, and the description would be repository. Um, we can just name it like code repository, right? And then we can save that. So then from the home page, it actually should just load on its own um, in regards to like, uh, it, it'll just auto refresh your, your settings. So you don't have to like refresh the page and stuff like that. It'll just re do it on its own. So now you can see that it has home lab and GitLab, and you can create it's multiple groups, um, subset underneath. Um, then you can see there's like a bookmarks down here, which is slightly different than what the services are. So you can also change it where if you want um, bookmarks, you can update your bookmarks. So say for example, um, you know, you, you want to add um, things like YouTube, um, which is really cool. So like, say for example, you wanted to save someone's YouTube, you know, someone that, you know, maybe the channel that you're watching. Um, he's a pretty awesome guy, I would say so myself, if I, if I had to, uh, you know, say something about him. Um, so like, say for example, you wanted to bookmark uh, me, you can update the bookmark, paste it in there and whatnot. You can also obviously do multiple YouTubes and different things, but 
now you should be able to go to your home page. You can see there's YouTube down here and we can click it and it will redirect us to our YouTube uh, channel. So you can do bookmarks, you can do services um, and it's it's pretty neat. So you can you can change you know the tags. It could be like slash Drew SW instead of YT um, and, and whatnot. So it's kind of up to you how you want to do um, you know the abbreviations and, and whatnot. You know, slash Drew um, or something else, you know. And you can see it updated to be SD. Now, for the fun part, if you've ever seen, you know, in like the Home Lab subreddit or like the Self House subreddit and these people with like crazy, crazy, like, you know, home pages um, with all the services and things like that, um, you can probably figure out that they're actually, if, if they're using home page specifically, they're using widgets. Um, so these widgets allow you to essentially connect um, homepage to that widgets API. Um, so for example, we'll do like pie hole um, because that's something we have set up previously um, and I'm looking for it. And it will essentially give us what we would need for this widget. So what we'll do is in our configuration, we'll half it. Um, services.yaml. Let's change the third group. We'll call this like utilities. Utilities. And we'll name this piehole. And we will still ref this um, to http piehole.dragon.local8080 slash admin and piehole. Um, so, so that would just be like, you know, like your default, hey, I just linked this service, right? So like if I were to visit this page, you can see under utilities, Pi-hole, it brings you to the login page. So the few things to look at is we will actually need to create an API key. Um, so in Pi-hole, if, if, if you've ever done it, it's just in settings, API, and then show API token. So we're going to show it, and then we'll copy this raw token down here. Um, I'll post it in here for now, just to grab it for later. Um, and then what we'll need to do is do the widget configuration. Um, so in here, under after description, what we'll have here is widget. So it's just another subsection of the setting. Um, What's that? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh my god. One, two, three, four. Uh, type pie hole. It spacing actually does matter. It's kinda it's kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, HTTP pie hole dot dragon dot local eighty eighty. Um, and in this case I'm actually using an older version. Um, so I'll be using version version five. Um, if, if we're running, so you can, you can see here, depending on what API key, um, you, you might need to use a different version. Um, but I think I should be using version five. Well, that's what I tested, um, on, on a different one. Um, and then the key. So we'll copy the key, paste that. Okay. We don't need that. We don't need that. And then we should be able to save that. So in here, now you can see. In here we got the queries blocked gravity um obviously you can see i don't use my pie hole in, in in my in my home lab very often in my uh, test lab um for for my videos um but you can see that it essentially maps what what's here onto here so that is that's pretty simple uh the next thing to note is uh you can do icons also because you know sometimes reading pie hole and as opposed to seeing the icon you might be able to see it faster um, so to do icons, um, there's a few things to kind of consider. First, you got to get the icon. Um, so there's, there's a few actually good GitHub repos about icons, um, but we'll do walk uh, Xcode dashboard icons. They got a huge list of um, icons here that you can you can take a look at. Um, so uh, we should be able to find a uh, pie hole because I'm pretty sure I looked at this before. Um, oh, I need to do the, it got truncated. 
我是个牌号。Yeah, 牌号 PNG. This is what we want. So, what we'll want to do is download this image. So we'll copy image address. Um, we'll install wget. So we can wget it. Um, but the important thing here is we will need to put this not in configs. This is why we changed the directory. So this will be in icons. So wget, paste the URL. And uh, that's not how we want it, actually. Because that's not, I don't think that downloaded correctly the way I, I was expecting. Um, can I actually just download raw file? Yeah, wget. There we go. Um, so from there, you can see that we actually grabbed the piehole image. Note the name because that will be very important. So piehole.png. So from here, we'll go back to the configuration, change directory to config, and we will edit our services um, again. So we'll go back to um, where piehole is um, down here. And we'll, after piehole, we'll add icon and we'll name it icons and then the name of the icon itself. So save that. And then what we should see here is the logo um, doesn't appear right now, but what we'll need to do is actually uh, restart Docker Compose. Um, oh, up, detach. Um, because sometimes the images, when, when you put it in, it'll, it'll pick up afterwards. Um, there we go. Uh, so now you can see that the image is there. So you actually will have to re restart your container for it to actually pick up the images after you download it. Um, but you can see it's pretty nice. I mean, you got your, your image. Um, you can get different stats for certain widgets and services that they support. Um, so the list of supported ones are over here to the left. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to trying the Synology one because I have that also. Um, but there's, you know, some pretty cool ones too. Um, NetData was also a very interesting one that I, I saw. Uh, PFSense was a cool one. Also, I've used that before. I don't currently use it, but I, ha I have, I do use it um, for certain things. So obviously you got a, a wide range of variety here on things you might be interested in. TrueNAS is another one. Uptime Kuma, if you're looking for whatnot. Unified Controller, if you have Ubiquity stuff. Um, and it kind of just keeps on going. So. Uh, Kind of just play around with whatever you find, but it's pretty pretty simple from there. Um, so, but yeah, that's kind of the general gist of setting up the pie hole. Um, you can change the background, you can change a lot of things. I'm not going to go in that uh, depth for this video, um, but that's kind of how you get started at least creating um, your services or bookmarks, um, as well as getting an image set up with um, API data. So. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!